Let's straighten one thing up right away. Zen 2 is technically the Ryzen 3000 series. The Ryzen 2000 series was technically Zen Plus, whose architecture was heavily reliant on the original 14 nanometer Zen architecture. I feel as though people get those confused quite a bit. And to be honest, I really don't blame you. Uh, but what we'll be discussing in this video is Zen 2. Those are the supposed Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. And I'm sure by this point you've seen a rumor or two. So let's sift through the bullshit and rationalize just a little bit. This video is brought to you by builds.gg. It's a brand new site dedicated to sharing PC builds and hosting friendly competitions. You can browse builds by location, as in country, form factor, color. Uh, I mean, there are so many different ways to, to kind of filter results, which is a great thing if you especially want to draw on inspiration for future builds. And to kick off the launch, builds.gg's creators are giving away a Titan RTX graphics card. The site is 100% free to use. You just got to sign up and the giveaway entry is technically free as well. So in my opinion, it's a win-win. Click the link below and start sharing today. The seven nanometer Zen 2 process is discussed in this video right here in case you're wondering. Uh, but in this video, I wanna look specifically at the rumors floating around. I, I feel like most tech channels have already covered the rumors, uh, but I wanna talk about the frequency charts, skew lists, basically these right here. And there seems to be at least one outlet willing to leak information and garner hundreds of thousands of clicks. I get it, it's the business we're in, but rather than sulking in the beauty of what may be incredible prices for tons of cores and frequencies as high as five gigahertz, I'll be looking at these charts very critically. The skepticism is healthy, and I encourage everyone to do a fair bit of research before concluding with RIP Intel or RIP AMD, although we've been hearing RIP Intel a lot lately because these leaks have been so popular. Because I can assure you, Intel isn't going anywhere anytime soon, right? Uh, so let's start with the official Zen 2 leak. This is the first one we saw. Several YouTube channels covered this chart, and as a result, many became amped for uh, for the launch, which we now expect will be sometime in Q1 or Q2 2019. We might even see them announce these CPUs at CES, though we don't expect to be able to buy these as general consumers until around July. It usually takes uh, three to six months for uh, these processes to actually hit the market. So just because you see them announced at CES, it does not mean that anytime soon you'll be able to buy them. So when people say, oh, wait for Ryzen 3000, well, okay, you might be waiting upwards of six months. So if you need a PC now, it might just be worth buying something on the cheap, maybe even used uh, for the time being. But look, this chart right here has my BS detector going off in all kinds of directions. What concerns me the most is that this chart is extremely detailed. We usually see a few specs fall through the cracks here and there, but uh, I mean, come on, a full skew breakdown with prices, frequencies, TDPs, and core counts? I don't know about this one. We first saw this pop up in late 2018, by the way, so it looks like the lowest core count in Zen 2 is 6, which would be a radical shift if true. 6 cores and 12 threads with a boost clock of 4 gigahertz. Well, I mean, that doesn't seem too far out of touch. We're already seeing Ryzen 1600 CPUs touching the $100 price point at times, so I could definitely see AMD doing something similar with the new generation. It just it's kind of mind boggling to think that they would completely get rid of quad core hyper threaded CPUs, especially considering, I mean, if you're already charging a hundred bucks for the six core variant, why not make a four core eight thread variant that sells for 60 bucks, $65. Then you get the ultra, you know, ultra budget oriented consumers involved as well. So uh, to me, it feels like a missed opportunity unless they plan on releasing those CPUs later on, which historically speaking, that would be probably what they'll do. Oh, and one more thing, this TDP is, um, well, it's oddly low. This would be an incredible feed for TSMC, if true. And one I'm really intrigued by here is the supposed 3600G, eight core, 16 threads, 3.8 gigahertz boost clock. That's usually across one core though, keep that in mind. And supposedly 20 Vega compute units. That would be pretty incredible. The TDP seems to scale correctly uh, from that of the non-APU counterpart, the regular 33600, but I'd be awfully surprised if the price disparity between these two was this small. I think my biggest degree of skepticism though stems from the price, as well as the fact that it could all be contained in just a 95 watt package. I mean, I'm not even seeing how even with the new fab, AMD could manage eight cores and 16 threads and 20 Vega cores into a 95 watt TDP. Then again, Intel managed the same thing with the 9900K, though it often runs far out of TDP spec when even a single switch is flipped in the BIOS. So maybe that's the case here as well. We start venturing into unknown territory though at the Ryzen 7 mark, 12 cores, 24 threads, and somehow a five gigahertz boost clock. Call me old fashioned, but uh, since when has AMD delivered both high core count chips and excellent overclockers at the same time? And no, Bulldozer doesn't count. More on that right 
here. What I'm honestly thinking when I look at this section of the chart is that these specs are too good to be true. Keep in mind the boost clock, again, is just relating to a single core typically, whereas we'd expect all cores to manually clock somewhere in the realm of maybe 4.6 to 4.8 gigahertz, depending on your luck with the silicon lottery. But even so, managing to push just a single core in such a dense 12 core package to 5 gigahertz would be an impressive feat. It's one of the reasons why I'm so doubtful here. And the last one over here on the far right, just, uh, just seems totally out of touch with reality. 16 cores, 32 threads, and a boost clock of 4.7 gigahertz. Are they mad? First of all, if we assume four cores per CCX, that'll put this thing at two CCXs per die and two dies in the package. Same thing as a 2950X targeted at workstations, mind you. How on earth could AMD manage to cram 16 conventional cores into a package small enough to fit into your typical AM4 socket is beyond me. Call that the miracle of seven nanometer tech. And to top things off, a boost clock of 5.1 gigahertz. Look, I know it's a single core boost, but still, in a package this dense, even getting a single core anywhere close to that frequency would be a massive accomplishment. Perhaps we'll see how when AMD opens up in the coming months about the relationship with TSMC, but for now, I'm definitely skeptical about the supposed 3800X and 3850X. Now, transition to 2019. We've got apparently a Russian online retailer leaking the exact same specs for identically named SKUs, starting with the 3300 and working up to the 3800X. It's perfectly plausible to assume that they just ripped this chart from the leaks previously announced in 2018 and decided to plaster this up on their website just to draw traffic. You know, people do that. But an interesting note here is that the 3850X with five or so gigahertz boost clock isn't listed. In fact, I'll admit up to this point, I was extremely doubtful. It's easy for someone to fudge these numbers and pump them on a site like Reddit or wherever to build hype and instant fame. I could have made the exact same chart on Microsoft Paint if I really felt so inclined. But now that we're seeing two very different outlets publish identical specifications, despite the fact that one of these outlets is a Russian e-retailer with which I know next to nothing, I've come to give these figures a bit more consideration. And again, to be honest, if I was AMD, this is exactly what I'd want, but only if these rumors were in fact accurate. You see, if I had, let's say, uh, a hot new product ready to launch this year, a car that could do zero to 60 in two seconds flat, and then I found a bunch of random sites leaking incorrect info about how supposedly my new car could hit 60 in say 1.4 seconds, I'd be pretty pissed. Why? Because it would elevate my consumer base's expectations of my product. The hype would literally be detrimental to my sales. So when the car finally launches and people realize the acceleration isn't what they thought it would be, despite the fact that zero to 60 in two seconds is still incredible, they'll be disappointed nonetheless and possibly be dissuaded from purchasing it. Same goes for CPUs. AMD wants to hype their products, what company doesn't? But the moment inaccurate and potentially harmful information hits the public and it spreads like wildfire, you'd better believe they'll be running damage control. And maybe that was AMD's intent behind the sudden CES announcement. Maybe they feel the need to set the record straight. Or maybe they feel the need to fan the flames. We really won't know until they announce things. So I'm honestly on the fence about this one. Up until recently, I was extremely skeptical, you could say, but as more outlets confirm these initial reports, I can't help but get excited. We're even seeing engineering samples now of the 12 and 16 core variants just out there. Supposedly there are two different engineering samples out there now that people have been uh, talking about on the DL, but nonetheless, if they exist as engineering samples, that means that they could possibly be released at the same time as the other SKUs, which would mean that AMD is in fact pushing for a 16 core consumer grade CPU. Again, not sure how the heck they're gonna do that on a traditional AM4 like socket, but uh, yeah, I mean, if anything, they have plans for another 16 core CPU, but uh, if it is in fact a consumer grade chip, then that's gonna radically change things. And look, even if none of what we're seeing here ends up coming true, I've still got high hopes for Zen 2. We've been talking about it for quite some time, Intel's 10 nanometer prospect, which is arguably more dense and advanced than TSMC's seven nanometer, because it's just marketing hype at this point, hasn't looked very promising as of late, so we may only have Zen 2 to compete with current gaming kings like the i9-9900K. What do you think? Now, I'm honestly curious about how many of you buy into this chart. Does it seem too good to be true? How about the pricing? What I'm, you know, what in particular uh, has your BS radar going off, I guess is what I should ask, if anything at all. As always, I invite you to leave a comment down below. These discussions are always juicy and I'll be sure to jump in from time to time as well. If you like this video, thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite feeling, you know what to do. Click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Become a channel member if you're feeling especially lucky and I'll catch you in the next video where we will be uh, filming at, at, at CES. It will be in Vegas, so I guess that's not really a spoiler since 
it's pretty obvious that was coming up. But I'm excited about the content that we have to bring you guys next week, so stay tuned. This is Science Studio. Thanks for talking about rumors with us.